Did you know you can find this podcast on Twitter? Just go to twitter.com slash the L Romantic. Welcome to the Lesbian Romantic Podcast. This is The Diva Story, Part 5. Morning, Susie. Good morning, Hannah. Hello, mother. Miss me already? Hannah asked, smiling. Lucille had moved to Belgium about a week ago, and they had spoken almost every single day since. Still, Hannah was actually happy to hear from her mother. Hello, dear. I'm just calling to make sure you don't forget about tonight's recital. Hannah sat down. She had just arrived at the office and spotted her usual morning coffee waiting on the desk. How thoughtful of you, Mom. What time is it over there, by the way? Her mother ignored Hannah's change of topic. I hope you remembered it's a formal occasion tonight. Hannah picked up the mug. Yes, Mother. Are you bringing a date? <coughs> A date? Yes, it's custom to bring a date. It'll make things less uncomfortable for you. Hannah put down her cup. You didn't bring dates. Her mother was silent for a few seconds. Yes, well, that was different. Hannah smiled and shook her head. No, it wasn't. You went by yourself for years. Anyway, I don't know a single person who would want to join me this evening. She could hear her mother scoff. Surely one of your lady friends is up to the task. Hannah's eyes widened. Mom. She and her mother never discussed Hannah's love life. Not until someone special enough came along. That was the deal they had made many years ago. It probably had been her mother's way of not having to introduce Hannah's girlfriends at formal gatherings. This had never bothered Hannah. It wasn't like she had ever met anyone she would want to introduce to her mother. She didn't have time for that kind of relationship. And frankly... She had never met a woman who had made her reconsider. You will have to speak to Miss North afterwards, her mother said. And congratulate her with her performance. Hannah frowned at the thought of seeing Millie North again. I don't think she'll be happy to see me, she said. Nonsense, Hannah, her mother replied. I did tell you about our first disastrous dinner, right? Hannah still hadn't recovered from her first meeting with Millie. After the dinner, Hannah had called her mother as soon as she got home and told her she couldn't do this whole patron of the opera thing. Her mother had simply laughed and had told her to just be better prepared next time. There really was no escape, it seemed. At least not as long as her mother was alive. Hannah doubted she could get out of this arrangement even if something were to happen to her mother. Based on what she knew about her parents, she would be stuck with this opera thing for the rest of her life. Or, at the least, a part of her fortune would be. Have you studied tonight's program? It will help you when you talk to the artists. 
Hannah pushed a strand of her hair behind her ear nervously. Sure, a little bit. She lied. Her mother could probably hear she was lying, but apparently chose not to confront Hannah about it. Well, then just try to enjoy yourself. Congratulate Miss North afterwards, and then you can go home. God, she's talking to me like I'm a teenager, Hannah thought. Then again... I am behaving like one. Hannah looked around her office and decided to change the topic to something she felt more comfortable with. Everything is on schedule for the opening in Boston next week. Sure you don't want to come? She asked. No, dear. I just left. I think it's best if I let you run the Empire by yourself. That means no more cutting ribbons for me. I know you'll do splendidly. Anna smiled. Her mother didn't praise her very often. Okay, Mom. I'll miss you, though. I'm flying out on Sunday evening, by the way. Anna said. Okay, dear. I'll let you get to work now. Try to enjoy... Or at least pretend you're enjoying the music tonight, okay? Hannah rolled her eyes. Yes, mother, I'll be a good girl. You'd have to wear a gown tonight to be a good girl. Her mother quickly replied. <laughs> Hannah laughed. Uh -uh. Not happening. Then I'll just be the best girl I can be, she said. Go, ma'am. Okay, thanks. Hannah took in a deep breath. She had already glanced through the window of the car and had spotted the usual women in gowns hanging onto the usual men in tuxedos. There even was a red carpet. Hannah looked down and plucked a white hair from her black pants. She smiled. Picking up her tuxedo cat Charles probably hadn't been a wise move after she had dressed for tonight's event. But she had wanted to take a selfie with him. Aren't you looking fancy, mister? She had told Charles while she bent down and grabbed him before he could flee. We're wearing the same outfit. Hannah had chosen to wear a glossy black suit with a silk white blouse her black heels were even shinier than the fabric of her pants and blazer. She had added a simple pearl necklace and matching earrings. Hannah brushed off another hair from her sleeve and turned to open the door. Thanks, she told the driver. Have a good time, ma'am. Hannah mumbled, don't count on it, under her breath. She quickly walked down the red carpet towards the entrance, passing a strolling couple. A young boy in a cheap-looking suit opened the door for her. Good evening, ma'am. Anna gave him a genuine smile. Thank you, she said, as she stepped into the glass lobby of the concert location. There was no one waiting in front of the hostess stand. So Hannah walked up to a young girl who was already beaming at her. Good evening, ma'am. The girl was wearing an outfit that resembled the boys outside. Poor thing, Hannah thought. Hi, I'm Miss Emsworth, she said. The girl must have known the guest list by heart because she immediately said, Of course, the reception will be in the lobby immediately after the recital. She handed Hannah a ticket and a program. Please enjoy your evening, Miss Emsworth. Thank you. 
Hannah took in her surroundings. The hall was already filled with people. She saw waiters walk around with large trays of champagne glasses. Oh, excuse me? She quickly picked up a glass from one of the trays Thanks. and looked for an empty table to lean on while she waited. Hannah checked her watch. Only 15 minutes left until the concert started. She found a table and put down her glass, the booklet, and her ticket. She was about to pull out her phone when she remembered she was supposed to know what Millie would be singing tonight so she could compliment her afterwards. Hannah sighed and opened the booklet. She scanned the pages for Millie's picture and finally found it after leafing through about half of the program. It was the same picture Charlotte had sent her. Hannah, again, was baffled by the difference between the Mildred North in the picture and the Millie North she had met about two weeks ago. Here, Millie looked confident, proud, dazzling even. In the restaurant, Millie had seemed insecure and defensive. Can't blame her, Hannah thought. She stared at the picture a bit longer. She was surprised to note she no longer felt indifferent towards Millie. Probably because she thought she had somehow hurt her during that dinner. Hannah was startled by the loud sound coming from the speakers in the lobby. She recognized it as the signal to start heading towards the actual concert hall. Hannah tucked the program under her elbow and grabbed the ticket. She checked the seating number on it and was surprised to read Prime Box B. Huh, fancy. She would have to ask Charlotte how much exactly the Emsworth Foundation donated every year. Hannah quickly downed the rest of the champagne. She would look into the foundation's financials after she returned from Boston, she decided. <laughs> Hannah found the right door, Hello, showed her ticket to another young man in a questionable suit, and located her chair on the first row. The box only held 12 seats. She started worrying about the other people who would join her here. They must know her mother very well. Hannah now realized Millie wouldn't be the only one she would have to talk to. The other guests probably were opera experts. Hannah wished she had indeed looked up some information, like she had told her mother, so she wouldn't look like a fool. She quickly opened the program again and looked for an overview of tonight's show. Is it even called a show, she thought? Probably not. A big, elderly man suddenly sat down next to her and promptly stuck out his hand. Miss Emsworth, I assume? Hannah closed the booklet, forced a big smile and took his hand. Yes, sir. You look a lot like your father, he said. Hannah tilted her head in surprise. I do? She knew she didn't look like her father at all. Except for... Your hair, the man said, blushing a little. Hannah blushed too. Ah, uh, yeah, it's hard to miss, she said uncomfortably, as she pointed at her bright copper hair. The other guests were joining them now, and Hannah was somewhat delighted to notice the big man provided excellent cover. She doubted people could even see her behind his massive frame. Lucille told me you would be here from now on, the man continued. Hannah met his sea-green eyes. I'm George, by the way, he said. Hannah smiled. 
She liked that he didn't bother adding his last name or title. Your mother and I have been good friends for many years. Hannah was surprised to hear this. She had never heard of George. Then again, she rarely actually listened when her mom told her about these social events. I'm Hannah, she said, not sure what else to say. Oh, I know. Lucille told me to make sure you don't bolt in the middle of the recital. Hannah instantly wanted to just disappear. George seemed to notice her embarrassment. Don't worry, I used to hate this too, he said, stretching his legs and leaning back in his chair. Hannah really didn't know what to say to that, and was relieved when she heard the doors being closed. Less than a minute later, the lights dimmed and the guests in the theater lowered their voices to a whisper. When a woman in an emerald green gown walked onto the stage, the audience applauded politely. This is the most boring part. It'll be over soon, though, George whispered. Hannah grinned. Maybe this evening wouldn't be that bad. It almost seemed like her mother had sent her some comforting company. Who is she? Hannah asked. George waited until the woman started talking again. The general manager of the Met. He then said, Oh, Hannah thought, the opera really was like a company. She quickly got bored with its executive, though. The woman kept thanking people for their generous contributions. The only time Hannah perked up was when she heard her own last name. But she hadn't been paying attention and had no clue what had been said. She did, however, feel several pairs of eyes focus on her. Finally, the Met's general manager left the stage and a young man in a tuxedo appeared instead. He bowed slightly, then waited next to the piano. The applause picked up now, and Hannah tried to see why people were getting excited. Her eyes caught movement on the left, and she turned her head just in time to see Millie walking onto the stage. Hannah's jaw dropped. The singer was wearing a stunning purple evening gown. Her shoulders were completely bare. An elegant necklace guided Hannah's eyes down to the low neckline of Millie's dress. This was definitely the Millie from the picture, but the photo didn't do her justice. Millie's grace and charisma were ten times more impressive in real life. Hannah was baffled. She quickly glanced at George to see what he thought of Millie. She was shocked to find him grinning at her. This one's yours, huh? He winked. Before Hannah could say anything, George added, Lucille always has an eye for these kind of things. She wanted to ask what exactly George was referring to. But then the music started. She looked back at the stage just in time to see Millie change. Earlier, Millie had been smiling, beaming even. Now, she stood hunched over. Her expression was fearful, and her eyes drifted around the hall. Hannah slowly leaned forward, her elbows resting on the balcony's railing. She watched Millie's chest rise, her lips parting. Hannah sucked in her breath. The hair on Hannah's arms immediately stood up when she finally did hear Millie sing. She was 
was surprised by the chill running over her back. Maybe she felt this way because she knew Millie. Well, kind of. It was hard to believe that same mouth, thin-lipped and barely smiling at Hannah during their dinner, was now producing this stunning sound. As time passed and Millie's performance grew in intensity, Hannah became more and more ashamed. Why had she made this woman feel so uncomfortable when she should have supported Millie? Not taking the time to look into Millie's work had been disrespectful. Hannah had acted like a spoiled and disinterested patron while Millie had arrived to meet a mentor and ask for support. Hannah looked for Millie's eyes and was taken aback by what she saw. Even from a distance, Hannah could see Millie's brown eyes had turned even darker with a special kind of raw emotion. When Millie raised her arms dramatically, looking bewildered and scared while she dropped her voice to a long, low tone, Hannah's breath caught again. Suddenly, there was silence. Then a thunderous applause filled the hall. Millie's bright smile came back immediately. She bowed gracefully. Hannah watched her gesture towards the piano player, nodding at him. Finally, Millie slowly strode off stage. From that moment on, Hannah hoped to see Millie make another appearance. Every time another singer took a bow and disappeared, she glanced at the side of the stage to see if Millie would come back. She was disappointed many times in the next 45 minutes. Finally, the manager of the Met walked back on stage, smiling and waving, and started thanking people again. The lights came back on, and the audience started to chant cheerfully. You're still here, George commented. Hannah looked up at him, confused. At one point, you seemed so impatient, I thought you'd actually run off, he joked. Hannah smiled to hide her embarrassment. Oh, it, it was okay. Mind if I accompany you to the reception so I can meet the talented Miss North? Hannah's mouth went dry. Having George around would probably be a good thing. She had no clue what to say to Millie, and she still felt confused and ashamed. Of course not. Please do, she said as she got up from her chair. She followed the other guests out of the box and into the hallway. Once they were walking back towards the lobby, George offered his arm. Shall we? He asked, clearly in good spirits. Hannah wondered again if her mother had planned this. But she could hardly refuse George's invitation. Yeah. And just like that, Hannah was walking next to George, their arms linked. An elderly man with a younger woman by his side. The exact scene Hannah had rolled her eyes at so many times. She gave the couple walking in front of them a disapproving glance. At least I'm not wearing a gown, she thought, feeling defiant. Let's go find Miss North, George said, picking up his pace a bit, pulling Hannah along. Yes, let's, she managed to say. This was part five of The Diva Story. If you like this story and this podcast, please consider supporting it. 
It takes me about three to four days to write, record, edit, and produce this podcast every week. So, if you'd like to support my work and the existence of this podcast, I guess, please consider buying me a coffee at lesbianromantic.com forward slash coffee. Thank you so much for your support, your messages, your tweets, your emails, and I will see you next week. What was that address? The URL with coffee in it? Lesbianromantic.com slash coffee. Ah, thanks. Hey, this episode is over. Time to be quiet. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. <sighs> Unbelievable.